So hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and I finally come out to do the review of the Pro Stealth saddle. I've got it in a 152 width, the bigger one, with the steel rails and I'm going to compare it against the most recent long termer that I've still got on the bike which is the Pro Logo Knack Dimension 143. I've been getting on really well with that but I've always wanted to try this one. Anatomically it should fit me a bit better, it's a bit wider but as you'll see they're very similar. So as I just mentioned there I'm still riding the Pro Logo Knack Dimension 143. It's got the the carbon rails on it this one and i've been getting on really well there i thought it was going to be a bit too narrow for me across the back being only 143 but it actually measures up wider than that across the widest points it's very very light as well <laughs> it's ridiculous light. it's 140 grams it's so feather light when you take it off the bike anyway i'm not bothered about weight but that was just one thing to point out but let's not talk about that let's talk about the new one that i have been riding i've put the old saddle back on the bike and that should highlight the differences more than just leaving this one on and getting used to it because then I'll kind of forget what the control felt like. So anyway, the main point about this is to say that these saddles are very, very similar. This one is the 143 and this one is the 152, but actually across the widest point, across the wings there, I've measured it and they're both about 150. So the width isn't really that different. Where this one differs is it's, it's flatter across its total width whereas the Pro Logo, the sides definitely drop off a lot more. Now that's really down to personal preference. It, it kind of all depends on the V that your sit bone, you know, the angle between your sit bones and, and how it interacts with the saddle. Some people like a more rounded back to the saddle, some people like a flatter. Personally, I prefer the flatter. I wanted to try this one basically because it was a bit wider. It's got a bit more width at the nose, as you can see quite a lot wider towards the front of the saddle now with the with the knack dimension i've always found it's, it's a great it's a very comfortable comfortable saddle for such a, a lightweight saddle but it's kind of a one position saddle i'm only really comfortable in it in one position and at, that position is actually quite upright now when i find that i re get really aggressive and i'm in the drops it gets so narrow at the front that my it sort of feels like I'm, when, I, when I move forward and I, and I pitch my pelvis, pelvis forward, it sort of feels like I'm gonna fall off the front of the saddle a little bit. There's not much width there to stop my pelvis really just rolling onto my, my soft tissues, which is not what you want. You wanna keep those vital organs pumping, obviously. So uh, this is where this one should be a bit better. So it should provide a bit more of a stable platform when you're really rocking your hips forward because it's got a lot more width on the front and that should still give quite a good platform to, to base that V of your between the sit bones on because I mean I've discussed this before but you re you rarely kind of sit upright with your sit bones pointing into the saddle if you were sit sitting bolt upright you would and you'd feel it and it'd feel really strange but actually we most of us sit on the saddle kind of like that with the V of our sit bones resting on the saddle so it's, it's a really complex thing to get right saddles because everyone's different everyone's bikes different everyone's set back on this on the on the seat post is really different and that actually that's a huge factor when you when you take into account these performance saddles is it's not just about the saddle it's it's about the distance horizontal distance between the seat and the bottom bracket because that can affect hip angle and all the other sort of stuff and i'll come on to that in a minute carbon fiber reinforced plastic yeah it is carbon fiber reinforced plastic uh, it's got long strands of carbon pretty much randomly chopped up put into the injection machine and it comes out in the mold hopefully uniformly distributed I can't see any kind of ejection marks from the molding. Obviously, they'll be on this side aesthetically because they're then covered by the top and it's the same as this one. But we'll take this one off in a minute and you'll see the finish of this plastic, this carbon reinforced plastic is so similar between the two saddles. The only difference is this one has got the steel, steel rails. Now, I went onto the Pro website to find out if they were steel or titanium and it doesn't say. I've seen some bike shop adverts saying they're titanium, some of them say stainless steel. I can't tell um, because stainless isn't always magnetic so I can't put a magnet to it. Um, they do feel pretty flexy so they might be titanium because titanium is not as stiff as steel. Um, but they are not obviously as stiff as these carbon rails. These carbon rails on this are seriously, seriously stiff and very, very light. In terms of longevity I would always go for steel or titanium because these carbon rails if you put a ding in them with the seat clamp by over torquing it they can fatigue and they can, they can actually break even though Theoretically, they're a lot stronger and a lot stiffer. So if you're gonna be bashing around a bike or using it in winter and commuting on it, go for the steel one. It doesn't really add a lot of weight. It's like 30 grams. 
the rest of the finishing is, is immaculate. You can't see any glue kind of coming out of the holes where the, the, the steel is bonded to the base. Um, it's got these two screw holes here where you can attach a, a GoPro mount or a light mount or you know if you've got a 3D printer you can print a mount for pretty much anything you like. It's quite nifty actually, I really like that feature. I did buy the attachment for the GoPro or, or the light. It's a really neat, neat little place to put a, a good rear red light. This one is a lot harder. You can feel that straight away. The thickness of padding on the top. They both use this kind of microfiber material for the padding and the finishing of it, the way it's attached to the base, is flawless. You can't see any glue, obviously there's no staples, we're not using vinyl or leather anymore. The finishing is flawless, but the padding on this is a lot thinner than this one. And I'd probably say the base on this one, the plastic base, is stiffer than this one as well. You could, you could say it keeps you in a, in a more uniform position and it doesn't flex as much. Whether you like that, well, it's up to you, isn't it? I don't know, but I've been riding this one on the turbo trainer and riding this one on the turbo trainer and this one is less comfy because on the turbo trainer there's no compliance from the rear wheel there's no compliance from the tire the bike can't you know twist left and right easily naturally like it does when you're pedaling and this one you do feel the firmness you do feel the, the lack of padding anatomically it's probably better it's probably better for your your soft tissues and, and what have you but this one it's just more plush but i've always said when if you look at my other saddle reviews there is a difference between being kind of cushy and soft and comfy out of the box and and being anatomically correct okay so you can get soft spongy saddles like my old one's the fabric scoop it was really soft and very comfy to sit on but anatomically it probably wasn't good for me it didn't have a cutout I was probably compressing some soft tissues some nerves and stuff like that and even if you do sacrifice a bit of comfort with a cutout saddle and a stiffer base I think anatomically if you want to have children they are better we'll take a look at that one we'll look at them off the bike together construction like I mentioned they are remarkably similar in their use of the carbon reinforced plastic and just the finish of the material it's so alike the distribution of the carbon fibers in the plastic and the overall finish and the, the mold finish and the smoothness is so similar you'd thought they come out of the same factory I don't think they're made in the same factory because I think you know Shimano have got exclusivity in all their factories for their components and I know this one is made in the saddle factory in Taiwan that a lot of other uh, companies use but again very very similar the carbon rails on this one really nice amazing finishing very very stiff but this one does have less stiffness in the base now this one the base is along with the padding being thinner the base is stiffer and it's probably to do with these thick kind of vertical ribs that run around the outside and that gives the saddle a lot of bending stiffness in the middle there Whereas this one, the profile at the edges, you know, it's still got a rib on there, but it's a lot flatter. So on this saddle, you can compress the middle quite easily. Now that's nice if you're riding over bumpy roads, but again, it's not nice to feel the saddle kind of collapsing like that underneath you. Yeah, it's a bit of a compromise on that one, but you really, they're so similar. You really have to try both, I'm afraid. <laughs> but they're both great saddles. Actually, I really like this one. I think this one I get on with better out of the box. This one's going to take some more getting used to and I'll tell you for why. This one is great if you spend a lot of time right forward on the saddle and in the drops. When you sit a bit more upright on it, like you would on this one, this one feels actually a little bit too wide here and your, your thighs do rub, or my thighs do rub, this very wide section of the saddle. When you're sat more upright and you're climbing, let's say, with your hands on the tops on this one, then it's very narrow and there's not a lot restricting your movement there with your thighs. You know, I would say if you're, if you're a more upright position, this one works better. If you're a more aggressive forward position, this one works better. And these short saddles, they all tend to be kind of like a one position, one trick pony. Like, they, they can't really do everything, in my experience. And I suppose this one is a bit more like the specialised uh, saddle. You know, like I say, they are very similar. The dimensions are very similar. The finish is very similar. This one weighs just over 200 grams, just 146. So this is a little bit heavier. It's got steel or titanium rails, but I really don't care about that because when you're thinking about 50 grams, you know, the most important thing is to be comfortable. Now, probably the most important aspect about both these saddles and why I am now leaning back towards the Pro Logo one for kind of prolonged use is the position of the rails relative to the sitting area or where you sit the most. Now, if we look at the Pro Logo, we can see that the flat portion of the rails 
let's take the end of the flat portion of the rails. It sits quite far behind the widest point of the saddle. And I'm going to use that as my reference point, like the sitting area is the widest point. If you look at the pro saddle, the end of the flat portion, or the, the sort of end of the scope, scope of adjustment, it sits quite a bit more forward of the sitting area. So we've got the end of the rail here and the end of the rail here. That's probably about a two centimeter difference. Now, if you have a bike like mine in a large size where the seat tube angle is quite slack, i.e. you've got quite a lot of layback, I have to run my saddle as far forward on the rails as I can get it. And with the pro saddle, that doesn't give me a lot of scope to go into my preferred position because I want the rails of the saddle as far set back to the rear of the saddle, like this one, as possible, so I can slide the seat forward as much as possible. And if you've watched my other videos, you know I have a real bugbear about seat tube angles. And even the pros are doing it, and I've been saying it for years, that seat tube angles on a lot of bikes are too slack. And people want to be further over the bottom bracket, further forward, lower at the front, to open the hip angle. I mean, we all want to be lower at the front for aerodynamics. We know that works, it's obvious. It's like a TT bike or a triathlon bike. But we are restricted, and a lot of it's to do with the UCI's rules, that we have to sit way behind the bottom bracket. And what does that do? If you want to be low at the front, and you've got to put your ass all the way to the rear, it closes the hip angle at the top of the pedal stroke. It really makes that tight. And for, for a lot of us, it's difficult. So if you want to be low at the front, what do you do? You want, to, you want to sit further forward to keep that hip angle open. But with this bike, it's one of the only things I don't like about the TCR in this size, is that the seat angle is 72 degrees, and that is just too slack. And that's why I'm probably going to change this bike soon because I want to experiment more with bike fit and I just can't. So on the pro saddle, yeah, I've got, I've, I'm lacking this, this length compared to this one. Now for me, the saddle is best if it has the flat portion of the rail further rearward. So by default, when I install it on the bike, the saddle sits further forward. And on this one, I'm losing about 15 mil of fore aft, well, fore adjustment. So naturally, when I put this on the bike, it sits a little bit further back than I would like it, even though I'm clamping it right at the back and sliding it all the way forward. And that, I have to say, is one of the favorite things about the Pro Logo saddle is that the flat portion of the rail goes almost to the back of the saddle, and that means you can move it forward. And on this one, I've clamped it in the same place, but the sitting area ends up about 15, 20 mil further back. So it makes me feel more stretched out. And then naturally, where I want my sit bones to be, they're actually sitting on a narrower part of the saddle, which is counterintuitive to having a saddle that fits. If you've got, you know, if you've got your saddle clamped in the middle of the rails on the clamp, then it's fine. You've got scope to move it forward and back if you want to. But if you're already at that limit of being forward, I won't keep going on about it, but I do keep saying seat tube angle is really important when buying a new bike. Because we all have a reach, a reach and stack, but reach is only measured forward of the bottom bracket. If you've got your lot, a lot of seat posts out like me and the seat tube angle is slack, then phew, your seat, seat can end up way back over the rear wheel. And I just don't like that because I don't like to have my hip really tight at the top of the pedal stroke. That's why I've got short cranks now. That's why I fitted short cranks to try and open the hip. So, you know, I'm, I'm six foot five and I'm, ri I'm riding short cranks to, to get over the seat tube angle problem. And we see a lot of pros doing that as well. So my next bike, definitely going to pay more attention to seat tube angle. It's probably going to be a Canyon because they, they're nice and low at the front. They're long, long in the, in the reach relative to the BB, but they have a nice steep seat tube angle to get forward on, more like a TT bike. And you can easily work out the difference where your seat's going to be by varying the seat tube angle by one or two degrees. The amount further forward I can get the seat. And I think if, it's, if I steepen that angle by one degree, the seat's going to end up 15 mil further forward. If I steepen it by one and a half degrees, it's going to end up 22 mil further forward, nearly an inch of forward seat movement just by steepening the seat angle by one and a half degrees. Obviously, the higher you have your seat, the more the difference is at the top. If, you have, if you're very short and you have your seat very low, adjusting the seat angle, it doesn't really do a lot. But if you're tall and you've got a lot of extension, adjusting the seat angle really, really does make a difference. So if I went from this bike, 72 degree seat angle to something very aggressive, like a Canyon Air Road, maybe it's 73 and a half, is almost an inch my seat would be further forward. And that's a hell of a difference. When you're playing with a couple of millimeters but forward and aft, if you can get that further inch, if you need to be further forward, you know, you can really start to experiment more with bike fit, opening the hip angle, 
and then maybe you can go back to a longer crank if you prefer longer crank. So yeah, cheers for listening. We went down a massive rabbit hole there about bike geometry and seat tube angle, but as you can see, it can affect the saddle. For me, I think the Pro fits better, but because of the bike and the seat tube angle, that's why I've gone back to the other one because I can get the other one further forward. Pretty cheap, it's it's almost half the price of the Pro Logo one. The Pro Logo one, I think, retails more than 200 euros. I picked up the Pro one for 100 euros, so perfect.